I'd like to thank the Eli Contemporary Center of Art in Connecticut for giving me this wonderful opportunity to showcase my studio. First, I'd like to show you my painting tools. This is all the colors. I occasionally use airbrush. If you look, the buckets are organized by color. This is my markers, my paints. Everything has a label, the brushes. These are my flat files. And of course, anytime I see a flat storage, I've always got a store thing. And here are my homemade stencils. Each drawer, this is the store-bought stencils. Each drawer is labeled so I know where they go. Good drawing paper, try to keep a backup of that. And acetates, which you will see is critical to my process. On the table right now, I just finished gluing this painting. It's called Garden of Earthly Delights. I like to use titles that are from familiar books or familiar songs. These are finishing up of the vine series, the green parts of them. I wanted you to get a sense of green and color and rainy days. That's why they look hazy. On the wall is kind of a mishmash. What I'm trying to figure out is these paintings. This one I took a sand or two. These I did right after seeing the Amy Silman show. This one is clearly done and it took a year to complete and it's called Break Free from the Cage. You see the acetate. This one is a leftover from the Geometric series. I finally finished it. I was looking at Louise Nevelson at the time, her body of structure. This painting is killing me. It's the green painting. It was supposed to be like that blue painting in the background, but clearly I went on a tangent and it's one of those paintings that you don't know if you'll ever figure it out. And if I don't figure it out, I will sand it and start again. I've been working on the Vine series and the Stroke series for quite a while that my geometric paintings are calling me again. So I brought them from the background up to the foreground. These were the paint last three paintings that I did right before COVID hit. They're a work in progress. I'm allowing you to see everything in the studio is not perfect. There are sketchbooks full of ideas that I haven't even begun to work on. But I take notes and I store them. And I've always worked with flowers and geometrics, ge geometry and see where it goes. I always use a dichotomy of images and I go back from one to the other. Thank you, I hope you enjoy the video. The stairs started as the inspiration for the geometric series. This is the beginning of all that jazz. It started out as a simple painting. I was, I needed to paint it because of the orange. The painting is called Overcast. It was based on the sky images. The one on the table that you're going to be seeing is called Pinwheel. It's based on a child's toy that I used to play with when I was a little girl. This is from the Sliced and Stacked show that I had at the Huntington Library. It was, these paintings just fell out of me, one right after the other. I was on a roll and I was embracing the geometrics. Leap of Faith triggered a whole new series for me. I started questioning where I was going and I needed to make different work, which led to the beast. I worked on the beast and worked on the beast and worked on the beast. It was, I was obsessed as only I can be when I'm working on a painting for quite a while. I couldn't figure it out. I was still questioning the geometrics, as you can see, that I needed them to go someplace different. I was looking at Al Held on at the time and I was searching for answers and overlaps. The beast, I was also looking at Knox Martin, which is why you see the pink circles. They've disappeared. This journey with the beast took a month. And then finally, I was able to come to a conclusion. I wanted you to see the various changes of the painting. Pepsi No Coke were the inspiration for these pieces. Simple abstraction was the next focus and the vessel was what I was working on with this. Lego My Ego. 
The studio is always changing and I wanted you to see a piece from start to finish. This is how Lego began and I want you to see how it developed over time. A painting isn't formulated all in one minute. It is worked over time. Sometimes they magically appear, other times it's a struggle. This painting was originally a chandelier painting. I was tired of that series, so I painted over it and Tumbling Down was created. It was a leap into the geometric series. I need order, I need chaos. I need order, I need chaos. When I don't know what color to do next, I pull out my color aid box and I compare colors to see what goes next. The paintings on the table that I'm working on right now are a response to COVID. I had done a residency and everything I'd known was being questioned. So I started working small again to figure out what ideas needed to come next. Then came COVID and a green ick entered all the paintings. The next paintings are a response to looking at Ed Clark. I wanted the stroke to be apparent. I wanted a gentle breeze, a gentle tone. The pandemic hit and life as we knew it changed. I walked every day with my daughter looking at shadows. There were shadows on the ground. Everything was different and we would walk for hours just to get relief. These paintings were based on those shadows. Process is what drives the work. The first step is starting with an image I respond to in the real world. A shadow on the pavement, a stain on the floor, the expanse of the sky, even a pattern on a shirt. I try to get that image as burned in my brain on the canvas or paper. Then the process of painting takes over. Accidents, chance, disasters, mistakes all play a role. The act of making a mark is critical as well. These are the vines that I was obsessed with during the entire pandemic. I was obsessed with the rain. I was obsessed with the leaves. I was obsessed. I never talk about how much I hate gluing, but you will see now why I really hate gluing. It's a mess. It's hard to get it flat. It's hard to get it to stay. It's awful. Everything about it is awful. In case you were curious. My love of pink is legendary. It started when I was a little girl with a pink canopy bed. As a teenager, my mom said I was too old for it, but I still loved it. That is why I'm obsessed with pink. It's my happy go-to color. Yellow as well. These are part of the stroke paintings. And there is that green painting that you see in the studio in the beginning of the video. It's had so many transitions. Thank you for taking the time to view my artistic process. Visit me on Facebook as Lisa Petkermintz, Instagram as L Petkermintz, and my website, lisapetkermintz.com. Thank you to the Eli Contemporary Center of Art for allowing me to share my process.